Sukuna is the strongest person in Jujutsu Kaisen, especially with his Heian era form. We're gonna look at Sukuna in his prime, his journey through the series, and his brand new powers to see how strong he really is. Back when Sukuna was alive in the Heian era, he put fear into everyone around him. It was so bad they started praying to him and were forced to have peace because he was so far above them. The five Void Generals and Sun, Moon, and Star Squad rose against him, but were defeated, leaving no one else to oppose him. The Sun, Moon, and Star Squad was led by Uro, who's strong enough to fight Yuta Kotsu, who has the highest rank of special grade. This led to him meeting Yorozu during a festival, who instantly fell in love with Sukuna because of how strong he was. Yorozu was on par with the strongest from the Heian era, but Sukuna was so far above her that she fell for him without question. Sukuna then cuts Yorozu's chest open with one move, and was strong enough to one-shot one of the strongest from the Heian era without even moving a finger. Toward the end of his life, Sukuna was opposed by the strongest sorcerers who failed to kill him. The Heian era was known as the Golden Age of Jujutsu, where people were more vicious and sharpened their skills against Sukuna, but still couldn't take him down. The forces stacked against him were the Five Void Generals and the Sun, Moon, and Star Squad. Both squads were on par with each other, and a special grade Uro was among them, meaning Sukuna may have fought more than six special grade sorcerers at once and still won. The battle included the angels and the remnants of the Sugawara clan, an entire squad of the same angel that can take away curse techniques and wipe evil from existence on top of Yuta's ancestors. After defeating all of them, Sukuna met with Kenjaku to become a cursed object. This let him cheat death and travel 1,000 years to the future by splitting up his soul, which he learned how to do himself after Kenjaku helped him this one time. 600 years later, Kenjaku's convinced Sukuna is the strongest he's ever seen even after seeing Kashimo in old age. Kashimo is the strongest of his generation, has never known weakness, and Kenjaku is the highest rank there is with 600 years of experience and Sukuna is still above both of them. Since fighting the strongest is the only thing on his mind, Kashimo agrees to go beyond death and fight Sukuna 400 years in the future. This is the same thing Kenjaku did to Sukuna by turning his soul into a cursed object, yet only Sukuna learned how to copy it after seeing it one time. Kenjaku's goal with changing bodies and experimenting for a thousand years was to see the upper limit of human potential, which may have been inspired by Sukuna since he's the strongest he's ever seen even after 600 years. This goal of Kenjaku's led him to want to merge all of Japan into a massive curse. If Sukuna was the inspiration for this, it's even more impressive because this curse Kenjaku wants to make is made of 100 million people's cursed energy. Getting back on track, Sukuna's soul was split into 20 fingers that stuck around for a thousand years. Each of these fingers has the curse energy to match a special grade curse on their own the highest rank for a curse there is, meaning Sukuna at bare minimum is as strong as 20 special grade curses combined at full strength. Once he reaches the modern age, curses hunt Sukuna's finger to get stronger and have to be sealed to avoid that happening. The fingers are so potent, they can shoot a grade 2 curse all the way to special grade from eating one finger alone. While curses fight to the death to get this upgrade, it's shown that Sukuna's finger is a lethal poison. There's a one in a million chance to survive eating one as a human, but succeeding means becoming Sukuna's vessel. Yuji eats Sukuna's finger, and when he incarnates, he blitzes and one-shots a great two curse with no issue. Curses are humanity's negative energy in physical form, and great two curses are as strong as great three sorcerers like Nobara. Sukuna is then shocked to see Yuji can suppress him, which is impressive since vessels often lose their consciousness. Yet for some reason, Yuji can regain control. Faced with one finger Sukuna, Megami, a grade 2 sorcerer, thinks his only way to win is summoning Maharaga. Maharaga is the strongest 10 shadow Shikigami, who's never been tamed, that stands above special grade curses like Jogo, which is shown later. Gojo shows up and interrupts Megami, and with one look, he can tell Yuji and Sukuna's souls share one body. It's almost impossible to separate a vessel from its incarnate because the soul and the body become one, so trying to separate the two usually means death. Gojo tells Yuji he wants 10 seconds to spar with Sukuna, and Yuji reluctantly agrees. Gojo is the strongest of his era, above every special grade sorcerer of his generation, changed the world with his birth alone and Sukuna's at 5% strength. 
When the two fight, Sukuna can't touch Gojo, who dances around him and uses Sukuna to show off to his students. Gojo is the fastest sorcerer there is, faster than Nabito's projection sorcery, which grade one Nanami can't even see move. Sukuna responds with his curse technique, Dismantle, but doesn't even touch Gojo. This is because of how Gojo's infinity works that infinitely slows down anything that tries to damage him, which Sukuna has no way to counter for now. Now that he's Sukuna's vessel, the higher-ups of Jujutsu want to execute Yuji to get rid of Sukuna, but none of them are strong enough to kill Sukuna on their own, which leaves Gojo as the only option. Even Gojo can't destroy Sukuna's fingers on his own. When Gojo is strong enough to wipe out a country and the world in the eyes of Suguru, on top of taking out special grade curses as a regular part of his job. This goes back to why they want to kill Yuji, since if he dies, the fragments of Sukuna's soul inside of him will die as well. This means Sukuna would lose several special grade curses worth of strength and have to start over from how many fingers remain, if he gets a new vessel. Yuji then agrees to eat 20 fingers of Sukuna to stop deaths around the world, which means Sukuna will reach his full strength, which happens later on. Now that he accepted, Yuji eats a second finger, and this takes him to 10% or two special grade curses worth of strength so far. When they get to Jujutsu High, Sukuna is disappointed Gojo's not the leader, since he thinks hierarchy should be based on strength. This is a reference to the Heian era, where Sukuna was so strong, everyone served and prayed to him out of fear. Sukuna then swears to kill Gojo as soon as he makes Yuji's body his own. This means he'd have to be stronger than Jogo, who can wipe out grade 1 sorcerers and every sorcerer alive to get this done. Gojo responds saying it's an honor to be targeted by Sukuna, which is impressive because Jogo, one of the strongest curses on the planet, was weak enough to laugh at in Gojo's eyes. While Gojo tells Yuji about Sukuna's legendary past, he calls him the king of curses. Sukuna is not a cursed spirit, but instead a human. Curse is a term given to people who are evil, like Suguru in the Night Parade. So king of curses means Sukuna is the strongest there was at the time. When he takes Yuji for a training mission, Gojo tells Yuji not to bring out Sukuna because he'd wipe out all the curses in an instant. The curses here were so weak we never even see their rank, so this makes sense. On another mission, Yuji and Megami run into a special grade curse that blitzes Yuji and Megami Shikigami before they can even respond. Yet even at 10% strength, Yuji is confident Sukuna can handle the curse on his own. When he does take over, Sukuna doesn't even think the curse is a threat and tells it to stop because he's thinking. Even though special grade is the highest rank for a curse, it listens to Sukuna. And since Sukuna is twice as strong as a special grade curse, this makes sense as well. Sukuna tells the curse to team up with him to take down Yuji's friends, but it jumps back in fear. This was only done by finger bears when they sensed Maharaga's cursed energy, someone that's far above every special grade curse in the series. The curse then panics and attacks Sukuna, and he regenerates an arm and blocks before the attack even touches him. This is the same curse that cut off Yuji's hand before he could move, yet Sukuna can heal and block with time to spare. Sukuna's healing is called Reverse Curse Technique. This lets him heal any physical injury as long as his brain doesn't explode, and regenerating limbs like Sukuna did is especially impressive, even to other special grades. Sukuna then blitzes the curse and slams it into the ground, the same curse that killed Megami Shikigami and got behind him before he knew what happened, when Megami's equal to a grade 1 curse himself. After he rips the curse apart, the curse heals and is proud of itself, but Sukuna mocks it for being basic. This hints at Sukuna's knowledge of Jujutsu, since this is harder for humans than curses, and how advanced he is as a sorcerer. Sukuna brings out his malevolent shrine and says he'll teach the curse true Jujutsu. Domain expansions are the strongest techniques in the series for the most part, along with maximum techniques, so this is the strongest move he has. Malevolent Shrine rips apart the curse and does even more damage than what Sukuna wanted to do. This shows how much of a gap there is between him and special grade curses, since he overkilled it by accident. Sukuna then rips out one of his fingers from its dying body and takes himself to three fingers of strength. Sukuna is at 15% now and has as much curse energy as three special grade curses combined. When he finds out Yuji can't take control again, Sukuna finds Megami and gets behind him before he even knew what happened. 
Megami can barely survive against Grade 1 Toto at the time, who's equal to a special grade curse himself. Knowing Yuji might get control at some point, Sukuna rips out his own heart to stop that from happening. Sukuna can live without a heart since he can heal himself. This means he's gonna fight Megami while healing at the same time, which he compliments Gojo for doing to him later. When Megami tells him Yuji will swap back even if he dies, Sukuna calls his bluff and says Yuji doesn't have the guts to die on his own. This is the first hint Sukuna can see Yuji's memories, since he used them to reach this conclusion. Through their fight, Megami goes after Sukuna and can't touch him a single time. Megami's as strong as a grade 1 curse, so since Sukuna is 3 times a special grade, this gap makes absolute sense. Sukuna is then caught by Orochi and attacked by Nue at the same time. Not only do they do no damage, but he one-shots Orochi, since none of Megami's Shikigami compare to special grade curses in base. After this, the fight is completely one-sided, and Megami has no way to deal with Sukuna and survive, causing him to say Sukuna's on a different level than himself. Sukuna then questions why Megami ran away from the special grade, even after seeing the gap between them, while Megami doesn't understand the question. Ten Shadows is one of the strongest techniques in the series, and Sukuna has a better grasp on Megami's potential than he does, even though he just met him for the first time. He even mocks Megami for trying to force him to heal his heart and read his plan from the beginning. Megami is known for how smart he is, figuring out techniques and strategizing, yet it's not enough to trick Sukuna. Knowing he's at his limit, Megami gets ready to summon Maharaga to attack Sukuna and end his own life. This only makes Sukuna excited, even when a stronger finger bearer than before jumped back in the same situation. Before Maharaga's summoned, Yuji takes over and dies in front of Megami. While this looks like Yuji may have gained control, this may have been Sukuna's doing as well, which gets clearer with time. Elsewhere in Japan, Kenjaku is meeting with Jogo to talk about their plans. Kenjaku now has a thousand years of experience and can wipe out a country on his own, and Jogo is a special grade curse, the top rank. The two speak, and Jogo wants to wipe out all the humans on Earth, but won't get the job done without Kenjaku. This means they'd have to be strong enough to wipe out an army of grade 1 sorcerers and below, and special grade sorcerers who are few in number. Jogo is the strongest disaster curse, with two other special grade curses, Dagon and Hanami, and their leader, Mahito. All are the strongest curses alive at the time and fight more than one grade 1 sorcerer at once. The man they want to help them is Kenjaku, who's one of the strongest barrier users in history and fights someone equal to a special grade curse and someone who can one-shot them at the same time. All of them combined make them five of the strongest on the planet at the time, strong enough to wipe out everyone in Japan if Gojo's not around in Nanami's own words. Even all their strength combined isn't enough to deal with Gojo and they have to get him out of the way first. Even then, Sukuna can kill all of them combined, since their plans fail if they don't get Sukuna on their side. When Yuji wakes up, he's inside Sukuna's innate domain and gets spoken down to by Sukuna. Sukuna's as strong as three special grade curses put together, and Yuji doesn't even know how to use curse energy, so it makes sense he views him this way. When Yuji goes after Sukuna, he can't even touch him, showing even more how big the gap is in their strength. Sukuna is even confident he can revive Yuji a day after having his heart ripped out with his healing. This is something no one else in the series has done, and even Ryu Ishigori, one of the strongest of his generation, thinks repairing arms is a high-level feat, let alone reviving someone a day after they died. When Sukuna says he'll only revive Yuji if he accepts a binding vow he'll forget about, the two settle it with the fight to the death, and Sukuna's cleave cuts Yuji's head open before he can even move. After his conversation with Kenjaku, Jogo tracks down Gojo to kill him. Jogo is a special grade curse, stronger than all others at the time, and Gojo is strong enough to kill special grade curses on his own. Gojo picks up that Jogo is stronger than One Finger Sukuna, which is more proof Jogo is above the average special grade curse, as One Finger is equal to One Special Grade. While he's winning, Gojo grabs Yuji to watch him take down Jogo with Unlimited Void, a move that floods its target with infinite information to fry their brain. Later, Junpei, one of Yuji's friends, is transformed by Idol Transfiguration, and when Yuji asks for Sukuna's help, he refuses. It's later shown that Sukuna can't heal Junpei, since Idol Transfiguration can only be fixed by Mahito. So Sukuna can split his soul into cursed objects, but there's no proof he can heal the soul on his own. Yuji attacks Mahito once Junpei dies, and it's shown that Yuji sharing a body with Sukuna lets him see the contours of the soul, 
and damage the soul with his bare hands. Once he's winning, Mahito uses auto transfiguration on Yuji to bring out Sukuna's soul, but he's frozen from Sukuna's presence alone, who tells him to know his place and stun locks one of the strongest curses in the series from one conversation. Out of desperation, Mahito uses self-embodiment of perfection, his domain expansion, and only traps Nanami who's helping Yuji. Self-embodiment of perfection launches an unavoidable attack on the soul, in a domain his target can't escape from. Yuji then breaks his way inside, which forces Mahito to touch Sukuna's soul, and Sukuna almost kills an already injured Mahito with a casual dismantle. This is also important because attacking the soul is Mahito's main way of approaching a fight, but he can't use this on Yuji ever since he'll be killed by Sukuna. The narrator then says that throughout heaven and earth, he alone is the honored one. This is a big difference from Gojo giving the title to himself, where the actual story straight up calls Sukuna the strongest. Using the last of his strength, Mihito escapes and says Sukuna still has less cursed energy than Jogo. Sukuna is at three fingers, so three special grade curses worth of cursed energy, which puts in perspective how strong he and Jogo are at the time. Even then, his soul is on another level, and Mahito's sure all sorcerers would be wiped out if Sukuna's revived. This means Sukuna would kill Nanami and Yuji, who match special grade curses, and Yuta, Yuki, and Gojo, who Mahito hadn't met yet, which gets shown later. Before they invade the Kyoto Exchange, the curses talk about their attack and they're told to avoid Megami since Sukuna wants him for his plans. Sukuna is a bomb to Jujutsu High and the curses that shouldn't be set off even if he's at 15% strength. When it's over, Yuji, Megami, and Nobara meet the Death Paintings, who incarnated into humans like Sukuna, but with full control. The author expands here and says if Yuji ate a Death Painting, Sukuna would kill it even though they're special grade, and Yuji would only get a boost from eating one if Sukuna's not around. While Megami faces another finger bear, he's on the ropes until he thinks back to Sukuna and Gojo's words to unlock his domain. This is a callback to Sukuna seeing Megami's potential, and the influence of the two strongest alone is enough to break Megami through getting one of the strongest moves in the series. While Yuji and Nobara fight the death painting, Yuji's immune to their poison, since Sukuna is the king of lethal poisons. This is a mistranslation that reads Sukuna is a lethal poison, so Yuji housing him makes him immune to others. Not that Sukuna is a master of poison techniques. Once he kills the finger bear, Megami gets another Sukuna finger. Sukuna eats the finger and hits 20% strength, so four special grade curses of cursed energy in one body. The finger bear Megami killed is even stronger than the last, which could mean the curse that ate the finger was stronger than the first, the curse energy split between the fingers isn't even, so some are stronger than others, or Sukuna's fingers are getting stronger over time, which makes his full strength at 20 fingers even more impressive. When Gojo gets sealed later in Shibuya, Nanami thinks it's over for everyone in Japan. This makes sense since most of them would be wiped out by Kenjaku and the curses, but they also stand no chance against Sukuna. Things go wrong in Shibuya, and Zombie Toji kills a special grade curse and blitzes Megami. This is so fast Megami couldn't even move, and he compares Toji to the three finger Sukuna he fought earlier. Toji was so fast before Gojo's awakening that Gojo couldn't even touch him, and was shocked over his speed. Even then, Gojo was already one of the strongest, showing how high Sukuna stands. But this gets even more impressive later on. Toji is the same man who can wipe out the Zenin clan on his own, which means he can even deal with a younger, prime Nabito, which again, makes comparing him to Sukuna stand out. Even though Megami's stronger now, he can only dodge Toji if he predicts what he'll do beforehand. The same Megami who can match Yuji to fight Jiro, both who are up for promotion to grade 1. Sensing another finger nearby, Jogo rushes to feed Sukuna all he has. It's here where Sukuna reaches 15 fingers, or 75% of his strength, and matches 15 special grade curses cursed energy combined. Jogo's hand gets cut off before he can even feel pain, which is crazy to think about. The same Jogo who got compared to the second fastest sorcerer, Nabito Zeni. Sukuna has Jogo shaking from his presence alone, with an aura he compares to Gojo, even at 75% of Sukuna's strength. He's so strong now he tells Jogo to bow and his body moves without even thinking. This is a huge jump from his confidence around Kenjaku as Jogo's instincts make him listen to Sukuna before his thoughts even tell him to move. The top of Jogo's head gets cut off with no effort. The curse that's on another level than Dagon who fought Maki, Nanami, Naobito, 
and Megami all at the same time. After a small conversation, Sukuna asked Nanako and Miniko what they want before killing them for ordering him around. This shows Sukuna has no mercy, even for those who helped him in the past. Jogo then pleads with Sukuna to take Yuji's body for good, and Sukuna has no interest in Yuji. His goals have changed to taking over Megami, so he will get the 10 shadows later on. He'll do as Jogo asks for now though, if he can hit him one time, and kill all humans in Shibuya except Megami. The strongest left in Shibuya are Nanami, Mei, and Maki, who peak at grade 1, two of which are injured, so the sorcerers are no problem for Sukuna. Jogo agrees, but Sukuna is more confident than Jogo. Sukuna has 15 special grade curses of cursed energy, so him knowing he's above Jogo isn't a question. When the fight starts between Jogo and Sukuna, it's one-sided, and Sukuna's on the winning end. Jogo's above every disaster curse, who fight more than one grade 1 sorcerer in a day, yet he's nothing to Sukuna. Sukuna even blitzes Jogo and cuts his hands off before he sees him, even though he's compared to the second fastest on the planet at the time. It's here where Jogo thinks back to Kenjaku's estimate of how strong he is. Kenjaku overestimated Jogo, saying he's at 8 to 9 fingers of Sukuna, but the gap is even more than he imagined. In their fight, Sukuna thinks Jogo's only mild entertainment even though Yuji thought he was a monster at the beginning of the series. Kusakabe tells everyone to run, since Sukuna and Jogo are elephants tap dancing on ants compared to them. Kusakabe as a grade 1 can match a special grade curse, so Sukuna, who's 15 times stronger at minimum, is above him no question. Before they can move, Sukuna stops Kusakabe, Panda, and Suguru's old squad with his presence alone. This is impressive because he's holding them hostage, and Jogo's maximum technique is less of a threat to them than Sukuna. Jogo's meteor crashes down to the ground, and Jogo's sure it would have damaged the King of Curses, but the move wasn't fast enough to hit him in the first place. Sukuna even mocks Jogo for not using his domain, and Jogo has no confidence he'd win in a clash with Sukuna. Malevolent Shrine is so strong it's called the Vine and rips apart its target over and over again until it ends. Jogo's domain, Coffin of the Iron Mountain, burns anyone alive inside, and its guaranteed hit is unknown at the time. Sukuna is stronger than Jogo and has an open domain, so he'd overpower Jogo and can break his barrier from the outside. Sukuna picks up on why he didn't open his domain and calls out Jogo for thinking like a loser. Jogo's fear of failure is something Sukuna doesn't have which is part of how he became so strong to begin with. Ready to end the fight, Sukuna chants open to use a different technique than before. Jogo's shocked, but Sukuna thinks it's common knowledge, which means other people can do this but don't know how, showing once again he's a cut above. He tells Jogo he won't cheat by saying what his technique is, which is revealing one's hand to make it more effective. Before the fight ends, Jogo's suddenly back with Dagon and Hanami, and Sukuna tells him not caring about identity would have made him stronger, and Jogo didn't have the hunger to take hold of his desires. This is what separates Sukuna from many others in the series, since he's not held back by any belief that would limit him from growing stronger. He tells Jogo to stand proud because he's strong, and not bad compared to those he's fought in the last 1000 years. This means Jogo should scale to the Sun, Moon, and Star Squad led by Uro, who can fight Yuta Kotsu, one of the strongest special grades under Gojo. Sukuna then kills Jogo with his flames, and one of the strongest curses ever dies to Sukuna and didn't hit him a single time. While Jogo burns to death, Uruume makes another appearance and is ready to work for Sukuna. Uruume is so strong she can wipe out Yuji and all the Kyoto students combined, on top of Choso, but Sukuna is so strong she's still a servant 1000 years later. Sukuna senses Maharaga's curse energy and knows something is off, and goes after Megami with no hesitation. Megami thinks Maharaga can kill Toji, Hanami, and special grade curses, yet Yet sensing the cursed energy doesn't phase Sukuna. When he makes it to Megami, Sukuna already knows how the summoning ritual works for Maharaga, even though no one explained the Ten Shadows to him. Sukuna recognizing this as a feat on its own, since it shows how well he can figure out Jujutsu with a glance. He heals Megami and tells him he has more for him to do. And even after 10 years of reverse curse technique, Gojo doesn't know how to do this. The same man the author claims can do anything. To save Megami, he has to kill Maharaga, so the fight between them begins. The same Maharaga that no one could tame the entire time the Ten Shadows existed. When Maharaga swings at Sukuna, he's fast enough to make contact and force Sukuna into the ground. 
which Jogo could not do the entire time they fought. Sukuna fires his dismantle and cuts Maharaga, the same attack that ripped apart Jogo, but Maharaga stays in one piece, adapts, and survives. Maharaga even deflects Cleave, that no one in the series has done before or after him thanks to his adaptation, since Sukuna's technique is so fast that it's hardly ever been seen. Maharaga responds by knocking Sukuna through buildings that most of the cast can't do since they struggle with Jogo, let alone Sukuna, who's above him. Now that he's back, Sukuna cleaves Maharaga and splits him down the middle. This move so strong it can one-shot on its own, yet Maharaga's adaptation keeps it in the game. By the time Maharaga lands, Sukuna's already expecting it to heal. This means he's already figured out how regeneration works, even though he's only seen it once. He then figures out all the ways Maharaga attacks and how it adapts from that alone, meaning he figured out Maharaga's entire move list from attacking it two times. When he thinks back, Sukuna says Maharaga could have killed him when he fought Megumi, when Sukuna was five times weaker at minimum, from 15 fingers down to three. He tells Megumi he showed him the way, which is important for his fight with Gojo later, and his malevolent shrine is shown to be 200 meters at max range, the size of all Shibuya that he can shorten by choice. Malevolent Shrine cuts Maharaga and everything around it over and over again with Cleave and Dismantle. Cleave can be adjusted to one-shot opponents while Dismantle hits things with no cursed energy, yet Maharaga survives because it adapted. Sukuna figures out he needs to one-shot Maharaga to deal with it and blows it up with his fire arrow, a move that one-shot Jogo, a special grade curse, and vaporized everything around them in one hit. Once Maharaga's killed, Sukuna tells Yuji to look at the destruction while memories of everyone he killed flow through him. This breaks down Yuji so much he wants to end his life, and plays a big role in breaking him later. In the anime, he even fires this mantle like a machine gun at Maharaga, which shows he can rip apart anyone he's up against as many times as he needs. Later, Yuji's tasked with killing Mahito, and Mahito's pushed to opening his domain. Even though he's stronger now, Mahito's sure Sukuna would kill him, even though he can fight Yuji and Toto at the same time. Knowing it's suicide, Mahito pushes his domain to be 0.2 seconds just to not be attacked by Sukuna, who doesn't even see him as a threat. Sukuna's as strong as 15 special grade curses combined, so Mahito is no challenge for him to begin with. Once Yuji wins, he thinks back to how he survived a black flash from a special grade curse that hits exponentially harder than normal. Yuji credits Sukuna's strength as to why he survived, so Sukuna getting stronger makes Yuji stronger as well. Yuji's execution gets reset with Gojo away, and Yuta Kotsu hunts him down. Yuta is a special grade who's so strong, killing the strongest curses in the series is normal for him. When Yuta fakes his death, Yuji asks him to kill him if he swaps to Sukuna again, the same Sukuna who one shot someone that Yuta struggled against later on. When Kashimo makes it to the present, he's on a rampage and looking for Sukuna, except he's now younger and had 400 years to think about how to advance himself. The culling games go on and eventually Angel is found, someone who can erase all curse techniques and wipe evil from existence. Angel tells both of them she can unseal Gojo, but won't help them unless they kill Sukuna. Sukuna has already fought the Angels, the Five Void Generals, and the Sun, Moon, and Star Squad all at the same time in one, so this is a massive request from Angel. What's even more interesting is that she calls Sukuna the Fallen. The whole Angels and Fallen trope, on top of people praying to Sukuna when he was alive, means he could have been viewed as a god in his era. After the group finds Megami's sister, he's crushed to learn she was taken over by Yorozu from the Heian era and Sukuna uses his binding vow on Yuji to execute a plan he's been waiting for from the beginning of the series. He rips off one of his fingers and splits his soul into it, which he learned from Kenjaku after seeing it done a single time. He then blitzes Megami before he can summon Maharaga and makes him his new vessel, which means Sukuna now has all Megami's memories and the 10 shadows in his hands. Now that he succeeded, Sukuna goes over why he took over Megami. He could have taken him earlier, but he didn't want another cage like Yuji so he has more control since he waited for Megami's soul to break. With Megami under his control, he decks Yuji and sends him crashing through buildings with one punch. Yuji is strong enough to fight Hanami, Mahito, and Grade 1 Toto, yet none of them stack up to Sukuna. With that, Maki and Takaba rush in, and Sukuna calls them insects crawling on the ground. Maki now matches Toji, the man who could kill Gojo in his early years, but there's still nothing to Sukuna. He locks his hands together and summons Nue, 
that dwarfs Megami's from the past. This new A is fueled by Sukuna's curse energy, so it's on steroids compared to Megami's. While this happens, Angel thinks it's their only chance to kill Sukuna and nails him with Jacob's ladder. That purifies evil and wipes it from existence, but Sukuna is still standing. When Hana gets ready to fire another ladder, she's tricked by Sukuna, who rips her arm off with his teeth. This means Sukuna can eat his opponents if it comes down to it, which boosts his strength since Sukuna's always eaten humans and they get transformed into cursed energy. This is also interesting because his servant, Uraume, cooks human bodies for him to eat, which means Sukuna's power may be a mass of dead sorcerers he's eaten to boost his own cursed energy, which makes his title as the Fallen or the Disgraced make more sense. Now that he recovered, Yuji's so feral he goes after Sukuna without even speaking, and Sukuna's shocked at how fast he is. The same Sukuna who's faster than Jogo, who killed the second fastest alive while injured. Yuji then slams a wall into him, and Sukuna's confused about Yuji's strength. Yuji was slightly stronger than Nanami and Shibuya, who thought Jogo was on another level, while Sukuna killed Jogo untouched. Now that he thinks Yuji's strength has to do with Kenjaku, he cuts him with Cleave, and Yuji survives. Cleave was strong enough to split Maharaga down the middle and damage Ryu even when holding back. But Sukuna hasn't figured out he's not at his best. Yuji questions why Sukuna causes misery, and Sukuna wants to know why Yuji is so weak. Where it's shown how much Sukuna hates the weak, which explains why he'd go as far as eating people to become strong. Yuji challenges Sukuna to swallow his misery, and Sukuna showers him with dismantle and questions how Yuji is still alive. Noticing his output is low, he realizes he's being nerfed by Megami, which explains why Yuji was so hard to fight. Now that he knows what's happening, he notes his output goes to 10% at its lowest. Basically, he does less damage, but Megami doesn't stop his arms and legs from moving. Even then, it's enough to kill Yuji in his mind. Maki makes a return, and Sukuna's surprised she didn't take damage from Nue, while Yuji says Sukuna won't die even if they do kill him. This is a reference to how Sukuna can come back from the dead like he did with Yuji. Maki and Yuji then fight Sukuna at the same time, and he handles both of them at once. Maki is the same one that can wipe out the entire Zenin clan by herself, and sense danger beforehand, and Yuji's not far behind. Yet Sukuna can handle both at once while nerfed. Knowing the nerf happens when he hits Maki and Yuji, Sukuna targets the ground with an extension technique, Spiderweb, so he can shoot Cleave at an entire area at will. Sukuna serves Servant Uraume then freezes Maki and Yuji with Frost Calm. Someone who's Sukuna's servant for 1,000 years can take Maki and Yuji at the same time, showing how far above them he is at full strength. Uraume apologizes for getting in the way, but Sukuna compliments her for putting more effort into Maki, even though she went easy on Yuji. This means Maki is stronger than Yuji, but still not enough to kill Sukuna on their own, let alone if he wasn't nerfed or even worse, at 20 fingers. Now that he's back with Uraume, Sukuna soaks himself in the blood of cursed spirits and gets control over Megami to get rid of the nerfs altogether. He even heads to kill Yorozu, who took over Megami's sister, to cripple Megami even further, to give him even more control and kill Megami's influence over his strength. Once he's free, Uro gets PTSD from Sukuna's cursed energy, since her Sun, Moon, and Star squad was killed by him in the past. Sukuna then cleaves Ryu casually, who survives because Sukuna didn't use his full strength. He then one-shots Ryu with this mantle before he can use a single move, even though Ryu could pressure Yuta in Sendai. And Uro, someone with full confidence in fighting Yuta Kotsu, was never seen again after witnessing the King of Curses. He then finally finds Yorozu, and faces off against someone who's one of the strongest from the Golden Age. While Hirozu questions why he isn't using his Heian form, they both know it's to their advantage to stay as they are until later. Hirozu talks about how much she wants Sukuna to herself, and he says she can do whatever she wants if she wins. Losing to him means death, so he'd consider himself a corpse if he lost, which hints even more at how strong he was compared to those in the past. While Hirozu celebrates, Sukuna brings out his divine dogs, but they're different than Megan. Sukuna is not giving them full form so they can't be destroyed, but they're still strong because of how much energy he puts into them. Even Sukuna's divine dog totality has to be dodged by Yorozu, when Megami's at best could compete with special grade curse, Hanami. While Sukuna's plan is to sink Megami's soul by killing Yorozu with 10 shadows, it's impressive that he knows he can kill someone stronger than Maharaga by limiting himself by not using his own technique in tandem. Yorozu then uses her bug armor that makes her stronger and faster, and Sukuna responds with Maharaga's wheel. 
This lets him adapt for Maharaga by taking damage with his body, which will come up later. Yorozu with her bug armor is faster than Sukuna and damages him before he can respond. Yet all this plays into his plan to adapt to win the fight later. Yorozu then fires liquid metal at Sukuna that he knows with round deer and heals himself, which means Sukuna can heal his own injuries, have a Shikigami heal for him, and negate curse techniques with Round Deer active. He then summons Piercing Bull to rip through Yorozu's armor, whose power grows the further it moves. This is boosted by Sukuna throwing so much curse energy into a Shikigami that his Piercing Bull is stronger than Megami's Maharaga ritual. He blinds Yorozu by surrounding her with rabbits and drops Max Elephant to crush her from above. Megami's Max Elephant weighed 6 tons in his domain, yet Sukuna and Shikigami have been stronger and Max Elephant should be the same. Yorozu brings out her domain threefold affliction that hits her opponent with a sphere of infinite pressure. This infinite pressure should destroy anything it touches, including Sukuna himself. Sukuna then summons Maharaga and goes inside of his own shadow, and by doing so he can dodge many attacks in the series. Maharaga then destroys Yorozu's attack of infinite pressure because he's already adapted to Yorozu's abilities thanks to Sukuna taking those hits from earlier. Maharaga then cuts Yorozu and kills her, and Sukuna's taken out one of the strongest of the Heian era at 75% strength while refusing to use his own moves. This also shattered Megami exactly how he expected, so he has more control over his body than ever before. Back with the sorcerers, Yuji is ready to eat anything to kill Sukuna, and notes he's like a cursed object soaked in Sukuna's cursed energy. This backs that Sukuna influenced Yuji's strength while living inside him, since even though they hated each other, Yuji's body is now better because of it. Their attack on Sukuna failed, but given the attempt, Angel frees Gojo, bringing back the strongest sorcerer aside from Sukuna himself. Gojo then goes straight after Kenjaku, who the author says won't kill Gojo at any point in time. When Gojo rushes Kenjaku, Sukuna gets in the way, which is impressive since Gojo's the fastest alive and Sukuna can still intercept him at 75% strength. Even then, Sukuna's still confident he'll kill Gojo, which sounds odd since he's not at full power, but it's important to remember he has all of Yuji's memories and Megami's, who's known Gojo for 10 years, and the 10 shadows on top of his own abilities. They agree to fight later, and Urume finds four fingers while Sukuna eats his mummified body. This brings him back to his full strength that made him a monster people prayed to in the Heian era. Urume does say one finger is still missing, but this doesn't nerf Sukuna since he's at 100% in his own word. When the fight starts, Gojo amps his hollow purple to 200%, and Ajichi uses a barrier so Sukuna won't sense it until the last second. Even with these advantages, Sukuna catches hollow purple at the cost of a hand. When Toji couldn't respond to one half as strong that he saw coming, Sukuna is the strongest in history, and Gojo is the strongest of today, which means no one in the last 1000 years was stronger than Sukuna, even while he was inactive as a cursed object. Both of them are special grade, which means they can wipe out a country, but this isn't enough to hold both of them, as even special grade sorcerers are beneath them by a long shot. In their fight, Gojo has the upper hand, and Sukuna responds with domain amplification. This turns off Gojo's technique on contact, but limits him to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. And since he's so strong, Gojo can't blow him up like he did with Hanami. With a clash of their fists, the two bring down a building, something no one else has done with their bare hands. Kashimo thinks Sukuna is godlike for swapping between his technique and domain amplification, and he says he'd be even more efficient than Gojo with cursed energy if it wasn't for the six eyes that make Gojo's consumption close to zero. The two bring out their domains that would overpower anyone else in the series, yet Gojo and Sukuna are equals in strength. Sukuna's domain destroys Gojo's from the outside, since it having more range lets him attack the barrier instead of only Gojo, which only Kenjaku can do beside himself. Malevolent Shrine then rips Gojo's neck open and Gojo survives, thanks to reverse curse technique that heals his wounds. His students even question why Gojo doesn't teleport out of range, but using his domain burns out his technique, which also affects Sukuna when Malevolent Shrine ends. While Malevolent Shrine rips Gojo apart, he's still confident his technique is better. Gojo can survive thanks to his healing, but Sukuna won't do the same against Unlimited Void. Gojo can even keep up with Sukuna while healing, which is impressive since this slowed down Yuki and nerfed Kenjaku. He even notes Sukuna's shrine isn't the center of his domain, 
So even if it's destroyed, Malevolent Shrine will stay active. Gojo even uses Simple Domain to neutralize the guaranteed hit, but it's not enough to stop Malevolent Shrine and gets ripped apart. Sukuna then cuts Gojo with Dismantle the same way he did to Ryu, but Gojo is still standing. This shows how far both of them are above Yuta Kotsu, since this one-shot someone who pressured Yuta while Sukuna was weaker than he is now. Using a plan, Gojo recovers his technique, which Yuta didn't know was possible even though he's been healing his whole career and Sukuna takes note of this. He then blasts Sukuna with red that rips off half his face, which means this red straight to the skull was even stronger than the one he used against Toji and Jogo early in the series. The two clash domains again, but Gojo's is now stronger on the outside, and this defends against Malevolent Shrine briefly. This time, Gojo is shocked. Sukuna can use domain amplification and his domain at the same time. Where Jogo and Hanami couldn't use regular techniques, Sukuna knows there are levels beyond what they did. Gojo responds by punching Sukuna with blue, that warp space on top of his body, which was enough to make Yuta throw up from one hit alone, yet Sukuna keeps fighting without issue. Sukuna then goes back to back with Gojo and shatters his domain. Since he knows Unlimited Void won't affect who Gojo touches thanks to having Yuji's memories of the past. Gojo survives thanks to Falling Blossom Emotion that counters the domain's guaranteed hit technique. This works since the slashes are simple compared to Unlimited Void, and it's another reason why Gojo's guaranteed hit is better. Sukuna and Gojo clash their domains again, yet this time Gojo's barrier is stronger than before. The domain does shatter, but Sukuna's break at the same time, since it takes 3 minutes for Sukuna to break Gojo's domain, and Gojo did heavy damage during that time, so Sukuna couldn't keep his active. On top of this, Sukuna learned how to heal his burnt out technique from watching Gojo. This makes him a prodigy for copying it after seeing it once, much like Gojo who can do anything according to the author. When Sukuna keeps fighting Gojo, he's able to block his attacks, even while so injured he can't keep up his domain. It's here where Gojo questions why Sukuna hasn't used Maharaga or turned up the pressure, since even after pushing Gojo this far, Sukuna still has more he can do. The two of them clash domains again and Gojo wins. Healing his injuries made him 1 one hundredth of a second slower than Gojo at healing his technique, so Sukuna was too late. Sukuna is then hit by Gojo's unlimited void that floods 25 years of information in 10 seconds time, since it gives half a year of info per 2 tenths of a second. Maharaga then shows up again, who's stronger than the one in Shibuya because of Sakuna's curse energy flowing through him. Maharaga's already adapted thanks to Sakuna putting the burden on Megami's soul meaning Sukuna can bring out Maharaga, already adapted to his opponent's domain, and they won't even know what happened. Even then, Megami's soul isn't fully adapted, so Sukuna won't survive Unlimited Void a second time. When Gojo gets ready, Sukuna calls him out saying he can't use his domain again, and already knows Gojo hit his limit from damaging and reforming his brain to refresh his technique, even though this is the first time he's seen this happen. Sukuna gets ready to kill Gojo with his own domain, but it shatters, which means he could use his domain six times in a row if Gojo didn't damage his brain. Sukuna then eats more punches with Blue, even while injured and brain damaged, putting him miles above Yuta Kotsu. Gojo responds with his max output Azure Glow that pulls in everything around it with gravity, but Sukuna breaks out unharmed. Even when Gojo uses after images that no one else has used in the series, Sukuna sees right through him and resets the fight on his own. He's also been using Maharaga's wheel to adapt to infinity, but can't adapt while using domain amplification. But Gojo's only using blue to slow down the adaptation, so he won't adapt as fast as he did against Yorozu. It'll take four spins total to adapt to Gojo's Limitless, which is longer than Maharaga took to adapt to Sukuna, since Gojo's technique is more complicated. Gojo then fires eight sets of blue at Sukuna and he dodges, making him the second in the series to dodge blue, let alone eight of them at the same time, and even weakens red with domain amplification so he can bypass curse techniques, weaken others, and heal himself consistently. But red never exploded, unknown to him, and hit Sukuna when he least expected. 
because even when Sukuna can see through Megami, he's not enough to outsmart Gojo. Gojo follows up and nails Sukuna with a black flash that hits him exponentially harder and boosts Gojo's potential, but Sukuna still survives. On top of that, Maharaga gets summoned anyway, so even though he can't move, he can still bring out his Shikigami with his will alone. This is the first time Gojo can lose since Toji, meaning Jogo, Kenjaku, the Disaster Curses, and Miguel all pale to Sukuna and Maharaga. Gojo responds with red with recovered output, but Sukuna knows this is too much for him in Maharaga, so he moves inside of his shadow. Maharaga's adapted to Gojo's defense now, and Sukuna's on support, so Sukuna can negate techniques with Maharaga and fire his own from a distance. He then fires Max Elephant's water in the style of piercing blood, which Gojo says takes skill on par with his own. Turning up the pressure, Sukuna summons Agito Totality, whose four Shikigami combine into one twice as many as Divine Dog Totality. The three of them attack Gojo while Sukuna moves through his shadow, so he can catch people off guard by attacking from underneath them. Maharaga then takes a red to the body and survives because Gojo's output was low, on top of Maharaga's adaptation. Even then, Gojo still thinks Unlimited Hollow can take out Maharaga, which is hollow purple fired in every direction. Yuto wants to take out Agito and Maharaga to relieve the pressure, but Hikari warns them not to interfere unless they're stronger than Gojo, which means even in his weakened state, Sukuna is fighting someone stronger than Hikari, Yuta, and Maki put together. Even Maharaga and Agito combined aren't enough for Gojo, showing how strong Sukuna's opponent is to face two Shikigami above Jogo at the same time. Sukuna doesn't understand how strong 200% Hollow Purple was, but he knows he can't afford to take one again. At this point, even a regular purple would kill him with a shot to the head. Sukuna gets Maharaga to cut infinity with cleave, and he now has a Shikigami that can cut space and existence, which he studies for himself. Gojo then fends off the three of them with one hand and blows up Agito. This makes Sukuna nervous for the first time in a thousand years, meaning Gojo is his strongest opponent in history. Even then, Sukuna gets handled with Maharaga by Gojo at the same time since Gojo is getting stronger from landing black flashes. Gojo fires red to meet his blue and stops Sukuna and Maharaga from intercepting it at the same time. Blue even eats Sukuna's piercing water so he couldn't stop it from a distance. Unlimited Hollow then detonates and wipes out Maharaga, showing how big of a gap there is between them. Sukuna kills Gojo by cutting space in existence and he learned this by watching Maharaga do it a single time, showing how much of a prodigy Sukuna really is. On top of that, this was almost impossible to pull off, so his odds of doing this without Maharaga were low, but he was never going to lose the Gojo, which I will explain later. Kashimo joins as soon as Gojo dies, and Sukuna is now fighting injured against Kashimo. He gets Hirozu's gift, his weapon, Kamutoke, which throws electricity at his opponent, but doesn't affect Kashimo due to his abilities. Kashimo wants to fight Sukuna to learn what it means to be the strongest, since he already views Sukuna as above himself. Even though he could barely stand after his fight with Gojo, Sukuna still keeps up with Kashimo, the strongest of his own era. Kashimo turns on his curse technique and nails Sukuna, since the electricity flowing through him makes him faster. He blasts Sukuna, who survives, when the blast itself can vaporize targets, yet Sukuna is still standing. Standing. Kashimo fires lightning at Sukuna while he recovers, which is so fast it's undodgeable for most of the series, and Sukuna responds with his Heian form to heal to full health before the attack lands. Now in his true form, Kashimo uses X-ray vision to call Sukuna perfection, which puts him above Kashimo's entire generation by itself. He has four hands and two mouths, which is the greatest advantage for any sorcerer. This means Sukuna can use chance and hand signs the way Gojo does to boost his strength and fight at the same time. Sukuna outmatches Kashimo in his new form, since now that he's healed, the gap between them is bigger than expected. He empowers his next move and fires the world splitter that killed Gojo, and this rips through Kashimo and his technique since Sukuna can cut through existence itself. He tells Kashimo he was strong, knowing he'd kill him, and and rips him apart with a wall of world cutting attacks, which means he can overwhelm his targets with a wall of dismantles that rip apart space. The full heal from his Heian form is important as well because it means he could have full healed himself and killed Gojo when he couldn't use his domain by undoing his brain damage and spamming Malevolent Shrine. While Sukuna is a powerhouse when it comes to raw strength, one of the things people are most interested in are his abilities. Sukuna's technique is described by the author as having at least two traits. 
slashing in flames. The flames are what most people don't know about in the series. This mantle is one of Sukuna's main slashes, which rips apart his enemies so fast he's in shock when they can even see it. Cleave is the stronger of the two and can be adjusted to one shot based on cursed energy. Next is his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, and the author describes it as the following. After the domain is deployed, anything with cursed energy will be continuously slashed with Cleave, while anything without will be continuously cut with this mantle. Sukuna expands a domain with a barrier that's not closed, just like a god. This basically means anyone with cursed energy will be hit with attacks that can one-shot them over and over again, and he can destroy barriers from the outside. Side. It also means he can kill those without cursed energy, like Maki and Toji. He can also use domain amplification to get past curse techniques, which he can use to weaken damage and stop guaranteed hit techniques as well. As shown with Gojo, he can cut the world, so he can cut space and existence on his own and send a wall of them crashing at his opponent. This is on top of his flame arrow that he uses with open, that could one-shot Jogo, Maharaga, and vaporize everything around them. He also has 10 shadows, that gives him 10 Shikigami that get stronger when combined through death. This lets him heal, negate techniques, use Maharaga to adapt, and go inside of his own shadow and the shadows of others. Next is Chimera Shadow Garden, a domain expansion he's yet to use. With this, Sukuna can clone himself and his Shikigami and drown his enemies in an endless pool of shadow with no oxygen under his control. He has a verse curse technique that can heal his physical injuries, can heal others, regenerate limbs, come back from death, and won't die unless his brain is destroyed. This is on top of his two weapons, Hitsun and Kamutoke, one that fires electricity and the other that hasn't been shown. Many characters want to get stronger to help others, like Gojo, Yuji, and Megami. But Sukuna has no interest in other people. So why is Sukuna so strong? Sukuna is hammered that he doesn't care about anything other than his own strength. This let him do anything to grow, unlike Jogo, who was held back by his beliefs. He believes love is worthless, so he wasn't held back by questioning his feelings for the weak, like Kashima, and does whatever he wants. So he continues to grow stronger with nothing to stand in his way. It's also worth noting Uraume may play a big role in his strength as well, since she cooks humans for him to eat, who turn into cursed energy when consumed. This explains how he became such a powerhouse in the series, since Akuna's strength who's above Gojo and 20 special grade curses may be a massive cursed energy of the sorcerers he's eaten in the past. In conclusion, Sukuna is the strongest character in Jujutsu Kaisen for now, stronger than Gojo, Kashimo, and his Shikigami Maharaga, who you can learn more about in this video.